HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller Baseball has advanced to the Division II State Championship. We have scenes from the Sharon Timlin 5K. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, plus Ashland Legion Baseball kicked off their season. But first, Brendan Ted Stone talked with us about becoming chair of the select board. Tom Nappy here with Select Board Chair Brennan Tedstone. Brennan, congratulations on your re-election to the Select Board Thank and you. your appointment to chair. Thank you very much on both accounts. Uh, can you tell us what made you want to run for a second term? Yeah, so Hopkinton is pretty near and dear to me. Um, you know, I've been here for my whole life. Uh, my family has been here for many generations. Uh, and uh, I just have a love for the town. and. You know, I, I think that it's important when, uh, you know, for the town that as we grow and get bigger exponentially that we have someone in town that really kind of knows its history and is able to kind of fuse the old with the new. What, what are um, some of the things that you hope to get done as select board chair? Um, so as far as the chair goes, you know, the, the, the rule that I've always thought it, as a chair is I'm delivering the message that our board gives. I don't make any unilateral decisions as much as I'd love to. Um, you know, it, it's something that we all need to collaborate on, and any of the issues that come up, we all just have to talk it out, and, and I'll be the one that presents a lot of it and kind of runs the meetings. But as far as, uh, as being on the board as the chair, you know, you have a lot more stuff behind the scenes, like setting up the meetings, agendas, and meeting with people, you know, off camera, if you will. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's the same. But my, uh, my goals for, for, you know, the next, for this year as the chair and the following two as a select board person, member, chairman, um, my hope is that we, you know, we continue the town moving forward and, and we'll, any bumps in the road that come up, we'll, we'll take care of and, and, uh, and you know, try to keep the taxes low, services status quo, and you know we're the the, uh, the safest town in the country, and you know, one of our schools are one of the best in the state, and you know uh, the fire department, you know you, it, we can't leave them out there. You know it's it's a it's a great uh, great department. I'm a little partial because I was part of it for 15 years or so, but uh, it's just a great place to be, and and uh, to have the people in town. You have the confidence in me personally to cast their vote for me and think that I can help steer the town and keep it great, then that's uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, a sobering, sobering concept for me. Oh, certainly. Um, now, you've been chair for a couple of meetings now. How has yeah. it gone so far? Good. How do you like the role? Uh, first meeting, I thought it was going to be easy. First meeting, we were like an hour early uh, through the agenda, whipped through it. Um, and then we got in a little bit more in the weeds with a couple of things the, the last meeting. So uh, time-wise, uh, you know, I, I do count on Norman to kind of ballpark where we think the time, you know, the allotted times are for the, uh, for the agenda items. But, um, you know, for the most part, it's, it's not a whole lot different, you know, except I'm the first person to speak during the Pledge of Allegiance, which is nice. <laughs> Now, uh, one thing circulating the news outlets is the proposal for an international marathon center in Hopkinton. Yeah. What's your take on the idea? It's great. You know, anytime we can, we can talk about Hopkinton in a positive manner, um, you know, it, I, I think it's great. I think that it has the, the ability to bring a lot of commerce to town, um, a, a lot of positive notoriety, a lot of uh, positive energy, uh, and to to really promote the marathon, which is kind of what puts us on the map 
to begin with. So, uh, so now we we have the ability with this if this marathon uh, center comes to fruition, which I would assume it would, we have the ability to showcase our town not just for the one week a year when the marathon's here between Kenya Day and whatever, but all year long. And people, you know, are people going to come here in July to to take a tour of the uh, of a marathon? Maybe I don't know. I'm not a runner. Um, but will they train at the at the training facility? Absolutely, and and I think it just I don't see anything detrimental to the town uh, in this. I think that uh, that Tim Kilduff and John Catino had a nice piece on Fox News the other day. I think it also portrayed our town as a very positive, uh, you know, a positive one. And uh, anytime we can promote our town in a positive manner, I think it's great. All right. Well, uh, we want to congratulate you again on your re-election to the select board and your appointment to chair. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hiller Baseball took on Westwood in an attempt to win their first sectional title since 2004. Here's a look. The first seeded Hopkinton Hillers battled the seventh seeded Westwood Wolverines in the Division II South sectional finals this past Saturday. The game took place at the home of the Brockton Rocks, Campanelli Stadium. Bottom of the third, Ben McKenzie put the first run of the game on the board. Hit in the air, to the wall, this is very deep, and this is going to be very gone! Home run, Ben McKenzie, I don't know if that ball has fallen yet. That might be back to Hopkinson. Oh, come on, Tom. one nothing, Hillers. He absolutely tattooed that ball. Left fielder took one look and decided to forget about it. Top of the fourth, Westwood struck back. This is up the right side, picked up by Glassford, throws a second for one, throw to first is going to be off the mark, gets away from Kester, and here comes a Westwood run, and we are tied at one apiece. And this is hit up the line, it's a fair ball, and here comes Guarino to score, and the Wolverines lead it two to one. An RBI double for Ryan Shea. Bottom of the fifth, the Hillers reclaim the lead. It's glove side. And this is up the middle. That's going to get into center field. One run is in to score. Here comes Amber Sony. The throw end is going to be cut off, and the Hillers reclaim the lead. And uh, the fans are going wild. Steve Simos and Tommy Amber Sony score on the two RBI single by Connor Kelly. And this is hit in the air over to center field. Could be trouble. And that is going to drop just in front of the wall. Here comes Connor Kelly rounding third. And he is going to try to score and will score. It's an RBI double for Drew Rankatori. Bottom of the six, the Hillers added some security. And that hit him. And that'll score a run for the Hillers. Cole Glassbird comes around to score, and the Hillers take the five to two lead. Connor Kelly at the plate, up the middle it goes. That's going to get into center field. One run is in, here comes another. Two runs are going to score for the Hillers. It's a seven two ball game. A two RBI single for Connor Kelly. Westwood down to their final out, trailing seven to two in the top of the seventh. Hit in the air to the wall and see you later, home run. It's a seven to four ball game. A two run blast by Kevin McDonald. Give him the yak up, Brendan. And there it is, strike three and the Hopkins and Hillers are the division two South sectional champions. The Hillers will head to the state championship Thursday night. The Hillers take the ball game seven to four and advance to their first state championship since 2004. Ben McKenzie went one for three with the solo home run and scored two runs. Steve Simos went one for two with a pair of walks and scored two runs. Connor Kelly went three for four at the plate 
with four RBIs and scored a run. The Division II State Championship will take place Thursday, June 20th at Alumni Field in Lowell. The Hillers will face North Champion St. Mary's. The game will start at 7 p.m. Coming up next, Ashland Legion Baseball kicked off their season scenes from the Sharon Timlin 5K. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. The 16th annual Sharon Timlin 5K Family Fun Day to fight ALS took place this past weekend and it drew a large turnout. Here's a look. A large attendance was on hand for the annual Sharon Timlin race to fight ALS. The event took place at the Hopkinton High School fields. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene.
want to say thank you for traveling uh, out here, back east, for all the people from Colorado. Uh, we've had a, an unbelievable uh, network out there, and it's great for, for them to come out and support a cause that we feel so dear to our heart. Um, my wife's back there somewhere, so I want to say thank you to her because she leads our whole group. It's, it's amazing what she does for us, and we just kind of follow her around. It's great. So if you see her out there, and she's crawling or walking, you know, tell her thank you. wonderful day for a race. Um, obviously yesterday's weather was awful, it was rainy, nasty, but somehow it seems that we always come up with a, a beautiful day. We've only had one rain, one rainy day in 16 years. It's amazing. Well, every race out here is special. I mean, you get to see some of the, the patients that are affected by ALS. Uh, we get to remember some of the people that we've lost from ALS and we get to raise a lot of money for a, a thing that we're trying to wipe out that's just awful. We had a great turnout, great weather, great people. This is a great community and we're excited to raise a lot of money to strike ALS out of the ballpark. We are incredibly excited that there are new therapies that are making real progress toward ALS treatments. Some that have come out recently, some that are in progress now, but all are very hopeful. We're closer than ever before. And I have to say the Timlin race has been instrumental in helping move us to the goal line. Ashland Legion Baseball kicked off their season, and despite missing a couple hillers from the roster, that didn't stop Post 77 from doing a whole lot of winning. Ashland Post 77 got their season underway versus Newton this past Monday, and they piled on the runs. Bottom of the first inning, it wasn't scoreless for long. Of course, broadcasting experience as this is hit high in the air, over to left center, to the wall, and it's going to land in front of the wall. Runner being waved around. Here comes Brandon Grover, and he will score the first Post 77 run of the season. It's an RBI triple for Jackson Hornung. That one is low, and here comes Horning to try to score, and he will easily 2-0 post-77. A wild pitch allows Horning to cross home plate. Bottom of the second, a whole lot more runs came around. Line up in the pitch. He'll get a piece of this one, hit high in the air, left side. Could be trouble, and it's going to drop past the left fielder. One run is already in. Here comes another and another. And that is going to clear the bases. A three RBI double for Jackson Hornung. Seven has loaded the bases. And Diavanzo gets a piece of this over to center field. It goes and it falls. Hornung is in. Here comes Kavanaugh. And up to third is Jewett. And it is going to be two more runs for post 77. It's now a seven to nothing lead. A two RBI single for Diavanzo. There's the ball, runner taking off from first. The throw is into the outfield, and here comes Jouette for another post-77 run. Six runs score in the bottom of the second. Post-77 added one in the bottom of the third and three more in the bottom of the fourth. And the pitch, line into left, and that's gonna go pretty much all the way to the fence. Here comes Horning, round third. He's gonna score. Kavanaugh into second with a double. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one smacked into left. Left fielder is going back, and it's over his head, going all the way to the wall. Kavanaugh rounds third. He's going to score. Throw goes over the cutoff man's head. Bottom of the fifth, post-77 would abruptly end the game. That is ripped up the left side, advancing to second is Amalfi. Now he's going to head to third. As the ball rolled past the fielder, now he's going to try to score. And there, the throw in will be very late. And Amalfi 
is going to cross home plate to make it a 13-01 game. The mercy rule went into effect and Post 77 took the 13-1 win over Newton in game one of the season. Owen Ward pitched the complete game. Jake, an impressive 13-1 mercy win out there today. The bats really got going. Um, you must love starting off a season like that. Oh, absolutely. Um, we met early today, uh, a couple hours before the game, and we talked about having an approach, um, what that means, what it should be. Um, and they came out and they executed that perfectly. You know, they were, uh, they were fantastic. Um, early in the count, working the count deep, working walks. Brandon Grover, I mean, that first inning has an incredible bat, works a walk, I think like a nine, 10 pitch at bat. Jackson comes up, hits the triple. Like we can score runs in plenty of ways. Um, and it's really awesome to see. We have a deep lineup. We're missing three guys who are gonna be in our everyday lineup and still young guys coming in, stepping up right away. It's awesome, it really is. Uh, how's it, how's it uh, been uh, getting the team together and getting the team ready for the season? Has it been challenging since you haven't really had the opportunity to work with a whole lot of these players too much? It definitely is tough, um, and we have got some practices in. We haven't had a full team practice, obviously. Some of the Ashland guys came and got extra work in once, um, but again, like it's such a short season, MIA, MIAA uh, makes it a little difficult, but coaches like Messer at Ashland and, of course, Simos in Hopkinton make it easier for me because I know they're coming here. They're ready. Um, they're talented kids. That's why we're here. We had 38 kids try out this year and so this group to make this team I mean you had to be a talented player so every single kid were deep um, solid players all around so I, I, I have it a little easier because they come ready to go uh, and it's pretty nice so I'd say that's certainly a better situation than most programs <laughs> yeah yeah um, Owen Ward pitched terrific oh, out there great. today uh, could you talk about his performance so 48 pitches in five innings he faced 18 batters and on 12 of those batters he threw a first pitch strike um, Owen is unbelievable. I mean, on and off the field, like, perfect kid to represent this program. I mean, hardworking, on the mound, hits his spots. He makes it so easy. Him and Sean have a great connection, too. Um, yeah, I mean, this is probably the least surprising Owen Ward performance I've seen. Last year, he opened us up with a no-hitter. So, um, yeah, he's, he's a great pitcher. He's a great kid. I'm so happy to have him, have him this summer. Well, Coach, there's a whole lot of talent on this team. Um, congratulations and a win in your uh, head coaching debut, and we're certainly looking forward to the rest of the season. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, June 21st at 9 p.m., Cheryl Peralt sits down with HCA co-founder Kelly Grill on a new episode of Meet Your Neighbor. On Monday, June 24th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, June 25th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, June 26th at 7 p.m., Town Manager Norman Kumalo talks with Greg Mazur about the upcoming Downtown Corridor project on the new show, Hopkinton Works. And also at 7 p.m., Marathon Elementary School celebrates Flag Day on a new HCAM Ed special. And on Thursday, June 27th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Appropriations Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Baseball vs. Milton game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. 
As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care. We'll talk to you again soon, and go Hillers! Ashland followed up with a 9-1 win in Natick on the second night of the season. Dom Cavanaugh pitched a six-inning gem in the win. Through the first two games of the season, catcher Sean Jouette went 5-for-5 five five at the plate, driving in five runs and scoring three. And Jackson Horna went 4-for-6, four driving in four runs and scoring four. We caught up with the pair after the game one win over Newton. Tom Nappy here with Jackson Hornung and Sean Jouette. Guys, a nice offensive explosion to start off the season. And uh, I know you haven't really had too much experience to really play with each other yet due to a number of your teammates going deep in the MIA playoffs. But how does it feel to get the season started off like you did here today? Well, that's a big confidence booster and that's all accredited to Coach Obit. He's really picked us up as a team brought us together, made us all work together. He puts people in the right positions to win and succeed. And I credit him with this win. He did a great job today. And Jackson, you had a great performance uh, today as well. You got three hits, drove in a number of runs, and scored four runs. Uh, what was it like playing with these guys out there today? J just fresh off a deep run in the MIAA playoffs. Uh, congratulations on a great season with the Clockers, by the way. But uh, how was it just picking up right where you left off, getting back on the diamond, and having an offensive explosion like you did here today? Oh, you know, it was great. These guys love backing me up. They back up everyone. So they knew uh, we were still down a little bit from that game a couple days ago, but they just picked us up. Knew, uh, they knew we had to go out here today and get a W. So, you know, first goal of the year was to get more uh, wins than last year, so we had to start off today strong. So, you know. And it was a, a bit of a disappointing finish last season, but certainly a lot of talent is back this year. What are your expectations for the season? Well, you know, our expectations are high, but we just got to take it one game at a time. If we get too ahead of ourselves, you know, we got the horse behind the carriage, you know. We're not able to move. So we got to focus each game, each pitch, each inning, and we'll move together. And Jackson, you have a number of returning teammates on post 77 from last year, including Sean. Uh, what's it like to play with?